Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Women Leadership in Gaming panel. Today, uh, we've gathered here an awesome crowd of lovely women uh, that I've literally just met, but all of them are very much different and great. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with Danuta last night, last evening, I'm sorry. And, uh, and yeah, and, it, and it's been great. So I'll allow uh, for them to introduce themselves, starting with uh, Lubica. Hi, everyone. So um, I am Lubica Garic, and I'm a senior recruiter at ABIT, a female-founded and female-led um, recruitment agency. Hello everyone, thank you for inviting me. And my name is Agnieszka szamałek michalska and I'm Culture and Diversity and Inclusion Director in City Project, and I'm glad to be here with you. Hi everybody, I'm Teddy Toledo, I'm the Director of Creator Relations at Yahaha Studios, and I have been working in creative industry for about 30 years. Wow. Hi everyone, my name is Maria Piątkowska, and I'm a senior narrative designer, and I'm representing the Flying Wild Hawk team. Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is Justyna Olszczyńska. I'm lead 3D artist from Artificial, and I'm really happy that I'm uh, here. <laughs> hi, I'm Danuta Psuty, please call me Danka. And I am a currently senior level designer at Bluebird Team. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. I'm Dominika Stala, and I'm representing uh, People Can Fly today. Hello. And Dominika is a game designer yep. at uh, People Can Fly. Yeah. Uh, starting from the very beginning, uh, maybe let's talk about how uh, you ended up in this industry. Uh, whether perhaps you had some kind of a hero, game dev hero, uh, that you uh, looked uh, at. Let's start with, uh, yeah, Lubica. So, yeah, I ended up in game dev by chance, um, but I got that chance because a very close friend of mine um, is actually, I would say, like the one of the founders of an NGO that was dedicated to, uh, to tech entrepre uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, she's the one actually who got me into IT and then, and then gave them. Like she was very vocal about the importance of like including, you know, more girls. And um, actually, yeah, the one, and she's the one who actually showed me, you know, showed me the ropes. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's the person who, you know, has kept me like grounded, who has, you know, been my rock for every, right. yeah, at every, you know, like challenge that I'm facing. So, yeah, I would say that, you know, she's my, she's my like real life hero. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can do this if uh, one of you has a hero you want to mention right, right now, let me know. I want to say something different that actually it doesn't have to be women to be a role model for another women, right? And yeah. for me, it was actually my brother who showed me game dev and this, uh, how I managed to, or I'm, I find myself here. But uh, later on, my answer would be also that uh, I think that all girls and women who are, you know, breaking the scheme and uh, break the system are for me heroes because when I heard stories of our um, of our women working in uh, CD Projekt and they were telling their stories, how difficult it was since they were really little, right, to hear, well, you are women or you are a girl, what you are doing on the studies or what you are doing in this, um, I don't know, place like school, etc. Uh, I think that every woman who is actually working in, uh, in technologies, games, are really heroes because they have to uh, get obstacle, you know, fight with them. So, yeah. Oh, we're following the order, so I'm, I'm going to go. That's, uh, yeah, that's up to you guys. Uh, I started working with music first, and then I went to movies, theater, and ended up in games because musicians wanted to work with games. And I'm the odd one. I don't have any heroes. Um, just because I think, how can I say this? I always worked in an environment where men are the ones dictating. It's the same in music, it's the same in any creative media. So pretty much what I did is I have to be better than the men to get my space. So I didn't portray myself 
among anybody else. I just tried to be the best that I could and push forward. And that was it. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of like Patsy here, to be honest with you, because I, I don't recall like ever looking at someone being like, yeah, I want to be like her. Uh, and, you know, I, and that like leading me to join the industry. I joined the industry because I came from an uh, entertainment industry. I used to work in a TV and film production, which is also overwhelmingly uh, men-led. Mm, and so I just ended up thinking that I, I can handle chaos. So, yeah, so here I am. Well, I always admired Sonia Blade from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> but the truth is, uh, actually, that I have a wonderful friend uh, who is probably sitting somewhere here. And she, she is the toughest girl um, engaged in this environment since forever. So uh, she's working here since, yeah, since forever. This is a good word. And uh, she just encouraged me to give it a try. And she told me, why not? You like writing scenarios, you like, you know, creating plots and stories, because I was always uh, engaged in RPG tabletop games. And yeah, and that's why I listened to her and, uh, and here I am. Thank you, Martianna. Well, let's give Martianna a clap. <laughs> uh, so uh, for me, um, I have some hero, but yeah, it's not a real hero from the real life. For me, the, um, probably uh, the most important uh, woman was Lara Croft. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but... Uh, no, don't be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I, uh, when I uh, found uh, Tom Ryder, I was really, really young. And uh, I remember that I believe that she's a real, real person and I remember when I play this game, I always um, try to find um, some uh, clue uh, how to get to her <laughs> and to meet her in real life. And because for me, uh, this character was a re really good mix of uh, intelligence, uh, sexuality, but also uh, adventure. Uh, and she was in a really good physical condition. And this was for me something amazing because um, this, it's not uh, really often to, uh, because sometimes I thought that uh, when we talk about women, you should, uh, you should uh, only have one uh, good, um, um, uh, one main, uh, one main, one m main, uh, like one main attribute, like uh, have one type strong, of like woman. You are one feature. Yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, you are intelligent, so no, you can be. Uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. when I look at her, <laughs> whoa, it was really amazing. But uh, also uh, in my real life, I remember when I met my friend Sandra, and uh, it was really surprising for me uh, because. Uh, I, uh, I don't know anybody from um, when I started. And I remember when I uh, met some young, amazing girl, and I uh, talked to her that, oh, maybe I would like to do some concept art. And she looked at me, and she took me to her house, and, yeah, you have a tablet, please, do, draw. And I was really surprised that somebody... Um, who I didn't know, really. Yeah. She was so open. She was, uh, and she, she gave me support. Yeah, she gave me su support, and I was really surprised. And I never uh, had chance, opportunity to, 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 to meet this so, so much open-minded uh, people, open for the uh, people who you really didn't know. So yeah, it was. Those, uh, those two girls are really... Selfless. Uh, yeah, so, so mm -hmm. they are really important for me. All right. So I have, like, uh, two female, ro role, uh, female role models. So uh, do you remember the very, very first Assassin's Creed? Yeah, I know it was a long time ago. But if you remember, it's marketing. It was marketed by Jade Raymond. And 
she was also very beautiful and very intelligent because she was talking about this game she actually developed because I checked her. She was a programmer, then she was a producer, and she was actually talking about the game she worked on, and for me it was amazing. So I decided I want to be like her, and it was basically for me uh, during that time. And the second person is uh, Raina Pratchett, who you may know that she's a daughter of Terry Pratchett, but I think she can stand on her own. She's not only the daughter of this Pratchett, but she's also a writer, a writer for games. If you know the, uh, the newest Tomb Raider, uh, she, she was a writer there. And I remember her because uh, she said something like that, uh, Usually for games, a uh, writer came at the very, comes at the very, very end of the project. And she, well, during those times, she was working to uh, incorporate writers uh, from the very, very beginning. And I admire her work, how she did that. She also started the hashtag One Reason Why, and she was uh, gathering uh, game developers to talk why they actually like to work for game dev, so that was very inspiring for me. So that's, that's the, the girls for me. That's wonderful. Dominika, how about you? Uh, well, uh, so I have a similar story to Agnieszka because my uh, first, uh, um, I was, uh, I get in touch with games when I was a little and it was my godfather who brought all these amazing games uh, uh, to me and I played them all, but like my first, uh, like real role model, at least the virtual one, uh, was a female version of Commander Shepard, mm -hmm. actually. So yeah, so uh, I remember that because uh, I was uh, sick that day and it was like summer. And when I first like played it, and it was like, oh my God, it's so great. And uh, yeah, she was like a really strong female character. And uh, also we, um, as a players, were able to, you know, influence their, her decisions, right. but she had her own character, and uh, yeah, it was like pretty great. And that, that was the moment when I thought, well, uh, I want to do something like that, and I want to well, make games. <laughs> so, yeah. Bouncing off of what you said, that you started playing games from a very young age, uh, how did you, uh, how, how, what do you guys think? Uh, the reason is for the stereotype that games are for boys, and like, what should we do, and how can we uh, fight that stereotype, if that's necessary? But like, how should we tackle that? Like, uh, may I start? Yeah, you, yeah. So, um, from my perspective, actually, the industry changed a lot from you know to yeah. the times when we were little, and it's not a big problem. Like it was like back in the days uh, when there, yeah, there was really like the, the game were like for boys, yeah, because uh, like the girls were not encouraged to play actually. But I think right now there is a lot of, you know, knowledge there and lots of, lots of uh, at least young girls uh, are interested in it. And like when uh, I found like uh, not so long ago interesting like um, chart about it actually that uh, at least it was in, uh, I think it's in the U.S., that uh, it's not this big gap between boys and girls that are playing games, but uh, the biggest difference here is who um, is um, uh, declared as a gamer, actually. Right. That's the difference, because it was like 40% of girls and 50% of boys that, you know, declared that they are playing games, but only, I think, like 20 percent of girls were declining as gamers, so mm -hmm. uh, that is, I think, something that uh, we, uh, we may change. But uh, I think that, yeah, uh, there is a bright future. <laughs> sure. Uh, us, so. Maria, what do you know? Patsy is, uh, yeah, yeah, ready to talk. No, I was going to steer the, like, the conversation just to say, I don't think there is that exists. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, we are mixing here what is the game industry and what are gamer players. Mm -hmm. When you go to players, it is pretty much 50-50. The only difference is that women are more casual players and by definition, people tend to say casual players are not gamers, it's just a, but they play 
more often than people that play PC, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Mayo usually, men usually like playing PC more often. But in players, it's pretty much 50-50. The difference is that the women don't go to profession, to professional developers. So you have about 24% of the game development industry that is women. So I think the important part to address is not why games are for men, but why women think the game development is not for them. Why do they think they are not going to be accepted, accepted in this business? They think they can be only players and not developers themselves. So I just wanted to throw fire in this. Right, but at the same time, like, it's more usual that it's, I mean, it's considered normal that boys are playing games, and still, I mean, not so much so uh, now, but when I was a kid, uh, boys were way more expected to be playing games. If you were a girl playing games, uh, could, you know, raise some eyebrows here and there. Is it a cultural thing? Because where it I could be. Yeah, it could also where be a I cultural come from, thing. It was never like that. Mm -hmm. We always would we go should to all land and play. <laughs> yeah. So I have one comment to this. Uh, I'm a mom and I can see how, okay, life is changing and it's true. The way we uh, raise our kids, you know, it's different. But still, there is like a men's thing. So fathers playing with their sons while, you know, uh, girls and daughters are, um, uh, you know, offered different types of, uh, of uh, activities, let's say, or attractions. And even at schools, um, I can see that if there is, um, for example, programming course, right, or uh, even the, the Lego, you know, um, courses where you can uh, learn programming, uh, it's very, I would say, um, addressed towards boys. And... Uh, when teachers talk about this, they also use uh, this, uh, you know, narration for, for boys, right? Uh, so I think there is a huge, huge work uh, of all of us, actually, to, to break those stereotypes at the, you know, very uh, basic level. I mean, even if you are fathers and you have daughters, you know, just invite them to have fun and to play together with them instead of like, okay, so, you know, I don't know, do something with your mom, you know, maybe make some muffins or something. Because you can still find these uh, examples in the, in the books for kids, in the books which are at schools, yes. you know. So I think there is a lot, a lot uh, to do. And uh, um, I'm from CD Project, and we, we just uh, announced uh, la last, uh, last year Divchen of Gja, which is like girls joining the game. And uh, why we did it, it's exactly to empower girls. And uh, we, we thought first about students, but the problem is that actually there are no enough students already at the, you know, at the university or the um, courses uh, that led to game dev. So we thought, okay, let's try uh, to start earlier. So uh, we approached high schools. And, you know, the lev it was amazing to see how many girls are really uh, uh, eager to join, um, to join uh, game dev, but they don't have this um, courage uh, to, to think of themselves as game developers, right? So, so uh, I was uh, astonished and super, super happy to see that we had uh, over 1,500 applicants for 20 you know, spots, and uh, I'm, I'm keeping fingers, you know, for our program and those uh, girls who are actually during the mentorship program right now, and I hope they will change the, the uh, you know, the ratio, right, because it's still 20 to 80 in, yeah. in the... Yeah. I mean, yeah. the wind of change is definitely here, it's just, you know, we, we need to keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mary, I guess. <laughs> uh, Agnieszka and the City Project, thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Uh, I would attack this topic from a different uh, perspective because I, I have a pleasure to be also a lecturer and uh, I teach students at various academies and schools. And uh, sadly, I observe such a thing that girls, uh, much more often than boys, they doubt in themselves. They think they are not enough. And that's why I think I would say one, one thing which is, I think, very important uh, to whoever would watch this lecture and uh, later on, uh, don't be afraid. Because the worst thing you can hear at your interview, job interview, is no. 
but the more often you attend such interviews, uh, the more often you try, the more you try, the more experienced you are and you're getting. And you are enough with your skills. So don't be afraid and just give it a try. It is also often times that uh, men will apply to a job with a description that they, they don't necessarily fit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, when that's what we were actually discuss yeah. discussing earlier. Yeah. So yeah, like as soon as you know, it's yeah. From a recruiter's point of view, yeah, of course, like I get much more applicants that are that are, that are males. Uh, and also, like, you know, data shows that um, male candidates, uh, as long as they fit like 50 or 50 or 60 percent of the job requirements, you know, they feel confident enough to apply for the job. Whereas women are uh, looking at uh, looking to to uh, to tick at least like 70 to 80 percent of the requirements wanted before actually uh, applying for the role. And um, yeah, and you know these differences are also seen in. I think that you you, you can tell us tell us much more uh, much more about it, and you know like in the workplace, uh, especially for example when uh, when negotiating the salary, when nego when asking for for a raise, when asking for a promotion, um, yeah, that women tend to um, be less assertive. What? Be less assertive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we tend to yeah be, be be less assertive and less you know like confident about what what we have been what we have actually achieved. And um, yeah. Yeah, Justina, you yeah, wanted to say uh, something. Uh, I have uh, also uh, one uh, suggest suggestion about uh, that uh, because um, I actually the lead uh, to the artist and for me it was really surprising. Uh, that um, during my casual conversation uh, at the pub <laughs> with uh, with uh, some of my colleagues, uh, I told them that uh, I was promoted from lead, and they they were they were really surprised that oh my god because I have uh, men uh, yeah. in, uh, in my team, yeah. and uh, during this conversation at the pub, uh, they uh, asked me oh my god woman lead, and the men. Uh, we, they need to. They will have to listen to you and do yeah. what you want. And, yeah. uh, and, and the, the answer is yes. And, uh, and not yes because <laughs> only uh, only lead. I'm not uh, command them. So uh, we are working together. And uh, but uh, you I, are leading. Uh, them, so. Uh, so so I think that not only we should um, empower a woman to, uh, to 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 attend to uh, to to game industry, but we also uh, should remember that we don't uh, that the situation will. Uh, Will be uh, that you heard sometimes really, uh, uh, re re really uh, harsh, uh, hard uh, uh, words, but also I think you should be open because, uh, on the other hand, you will hear a lot of amazing words for really okay. mature, uh, smart people, and you should be scared because you heard something, something, some, something bad. So. Uh, yes, uh, we should remember that the con always has to say it, and it's really important to mm -hmm. not focus on the bad ones. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also highlight this. So maybe if you like, you encourage it more. It's going to be encouraged more. People are just gonna uh, end up doing it anymore. Uh, Aga, you wanted to say something. I thought that. But that was that was it. I I am, I am very confused. But I You're let very them confused. talk and then I fight you later. But I'm very confused. Be yes, it's the part of it is <laughs> cultural, but uh, but it's not um, very. I mean, it's not. It's probably not as common. Thankfully, where you're from. But I th these are, I lived in 13 different countries. In and no, you've never none of these countries I have ever. Like <laughs> that. Like Give me a list of those countries, then we'll all go. No, not even in Japan and Korea, which are extremely traditional. They hate tattoos. But and you I trained the MMA. There. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I have a suggestion before, and then I let you guys so the. So as I will give you a very practical suggestion is get an internship remotely to a company outside Poland and then you are <laughs> <laughs> Work here, be here, but work no, yes, remotely. Let's all leave is the solution here. No, no, but, but, but there is a reason for that. I'm not saying leave Poland. I'm saying quite the opposite. 
learn from them yeah. and then teach your colleagues here how to make it better here and then make it better here because you can influence other people to make it better here then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, but I would say, yeah, I will fight a little bit. I mean, I will discuss at least this. Because uh, maybe you were very lucky, maybe not, I don't know. But there are, you know, researchers, like international researchers, and, uh, you know, a, a lot obviously comes from states because they have money for research, right? And they uh, often do Harvard, etc. Uh, universities um, and uh, McKinsey, you know, which supports. And there is a really a lot of research showing the numbers, right? Uh, showing the statistics, and those are the numbers which are, you know, difficult to discuss with. That, uh, as uh, as you said, right? That, for example, um, women uh, are sending the applications when they are meeting at least 75% of the requirements, while gu while guys are sending uh, when they have 50 because it's aspirational. Because they do like, okay, whatever, you know, I will try. Uh, at least, they, you know, what can hurt me? They will say, no, fine, I will go to 10 others. While, you know, uh, we, or I don't want to generalize we, but uh, according to uh, to the surveys, right, and to the, the research, is like this that women tend to, uh, to, you know, sit and wait until they are good enough uh, to, you know, I've, to send I've the I've done it. I've, I've done it. I waited one time. I was, like, building myself up to, like, go and ask promotion that I freaking deserved. And then my boss ended up just coming to me, and I was like, holy shit. No, like, I would just say, I agreed with her. It's not. I was just yeah. really surprised that your team was like, you're the leader. We're going to follow you. That, that's the part that I was surprised. That, that, no, that, no, that, no. That, I 100% yeah. agree with you. It's like the, the, the differences are there. They are there. Yeah. The thing is that I think there are, in, in some places, it might be more visible than in other places. I think all these things gender inequality, racism, it's everywhere. Yeah. We cannot pretend that it doesn't exist in other places. It ex exists in any country, but I think some places, it's, we feel it more than in other places. And in some situations, we feel, well, maybe when you reach leadership, you feel it more than when you are part of the team. But, but it, it wasn't in my uh, team. It was during a pub when I sit with my friends uh, and I uh, talk uh, about my promotion with my colleague. And uh, he was he, he said this. Uh, so uh, it, it was casual uh, conversation. He never knew me that uh, how... Um, uh, he ne never had a chance to work with me, uh, to, to have, a pr um, probably he never have uh, had a woman uh, leader, so he don't, he, he didn't know how to work. Uh, well, now he knows, so that's a good thing, after all. Yeah. <laughs> we'll teach him. Oh. <laughs> Well, then let's maybe, you know, let's talk about being promoted then. Like, what, 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 what do you think or do you know, ladies over there, because you actually have the knowledge and the data, uh, we can, you know, we can also talk from experience here. Uh, promotion in uh, our industry. Are men, do men get promoted more easily than women? I wouldn't put it that way. Mm -hmm. I think that... Um, Again, uh, that according to the studies, yeah, women tend to actually wait to get, you know, to wait yeah. to get yeah. promoted. You yeah. know, they are waiting to be recognized by their superiors and, you know, to be awarded for all of the hard work that they have been putting, uh, putting in over the, over the years. Whereas, um, again, according to the studies, uh, men uh, tend to, you know, uh, just go for it. Just to go for it, because, you know, as you put it very smartly, you know, the worst thing that had happened is to be rejected, you know, to, to, get, to get a no, you know. And it won't, like, you know, it won't, like, shatter, sh shatter your confidence. Like, it won't let you, you know, feeling, you know, hurt or unvalued, etc. You know, it's just a no. You'll get, a, you'll get another, another chance. So, again, you know, being more confident about your, about your skills, about, you, about your, your impact, and knowing your value, because I think that um, as women in gate dev, uh, I would really like to hear your stories. But I, you know, have been especially because I'm, you know, I'm a recruiter. Like I'm a part of the HR team who is actually supporting 
game developers and you know enabling them to focus like 100% on, on their work. Um, but many times, especially at the start of my career, um, I needed, I was, I was always like asked, you know, how did you, you know, why are you at this table? You know, like how did you deserve, deserve this place? And uh, it's a really very, it's very like un, 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 unpleasant, etc. So I think yeah. that, you know, we as women, you know, we tend to, uh, yeah, we just like feel this need to uh, bring even, you know, to be like, bullet, you know, to be bulletproof. Because even, you know, like, even if you, like, admit that you have, like, one, one little weakness, one little flow that, I don't know, that maybe, like, I cannot, not, like, name 20, I can only, like, name, like, 23 out of 24 characters in the game or something, you know, it will be like, oh, you're, you know, you're not a yeah. gamer. Yeah. You're not you did enough. not prove yourself. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's my, that's my take on this, but I would really like to hear your <laughs> Okay, so uh, first of all, it's not about game dev because it's typical for basically industry, right? For business, and again, as you said, the, the research it shows it proves that mm -hmm. uh, you know there is 100 men promoted, while the ratio of women is always lower, around 20, 25 percent, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, but I want to say something which I believe it's like also my personal um, experience. I think that uh, as a women, we talk a lot, we and our, like our team, and uh, we did together, we cooperated, we came up with the idea. Why I noticed guys are saying me, my idea, my team, my project, I succeed, you know, and I think we should learn from them actually, because, uh, okay, there will be other, maybe sh others should do something to change, right? And they should work and improve. But until we are not improving ourselves in this, like, yeah, take it and name it and call it a success, you know, for example, right? Then nothing will change. And I think that it's again, uh, that uh, if you are having or you will be having, or I don't know, uh, kids or you have sisters or um, cousins, etc., uh, just show them that it's a good to just be, you know, like not arrogant because we tend to think oh, we're confident, arrogant, confident yeah. right? And last word, um, I attended a program, I'm still there for leadership, right? Leaders. It's a leadership program and uh, there are you know, half women, half men, you know, everyone is from the top level, etc., etc. And I noticed again, while well, only observing, like listening to what they say, uh, guys are saying, I'm a leader. Yep. Yeah, as a leader, I'm doing this. As a leader, I doubt about this. And women, they're afraid to call themselves leaders. And they even all openly talk about this. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, really, maybe not. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my statement that we should take this, you know. We should take the credit for yeah. what we're doing, exactly. basically. Exactly. It's kind of yes. like somebody, like, props you and tells you you did a great job. And you're like, ah. But you should be like, hell yeah, I did a good job. I'm fucking good at it, right? Yeah, I think I 100% agree. And I think it comes also from feminism. This, I think, is something universal. Usually, boys, if they are confident, they are, this is seen as something very attractive in a boy being confident. A girl being very confident is not necessarily seen as a sexy thing. So we are told, being, we are, we are told since we are small that we should be like modest and calm and, and like humble. Like, and, uh, but I was making the joke with you, so I don't know if I, I, I don't think I'm a girl anymore, just physically. <laughs> not being that, I'm not saying anything. I am a girl, I'm just kidding. Um, but because of that, many years ago, I just realized, and I'm sorry for the bad word, the clink of because I just went, no, I am good. I do what I do. I lead people. I want the promotions. And if you can't see me, someone else will. Yeah. Your problem. Yeah. Yeah. And it's surprising how people react yeah. to that because we always expect people to get the negative reaction of that. It's quite the opposite. Yeah. It's very refreshing. Well, I mean, you're not going to get it if you don't ask for it. It's like, no. no. Besides, what sometimes. will you lose? If you are in a job where people are not going to recognize your talent and you're not going to move forward, yeah. losing it, you're not going to lose anything. Yeah. So go find a place that actually will recognize and will put you as 
art lead because you are you will have all the capacity and you're good at it and you should be. So that was my. But I. Yeah. <laughs> M Mary, go ahead. Uh, I just want to uh, quote my uh, smart uh, female uh, colleagues from the Women in Games Society. Uh, they actually share a nice clue word, um, confidence is good for you. So I totally agree, and I would repeat myself again, um, don't be afraid. And just give it a try. Just You're the steering wheel. And yeah, do it. Do you it. can practice confidence as well, right? Of course. It's just like you take certain steps. You you you, you start, start believing in yourself. Like for instance, uh, I remember when I used to go to uh, job interviews, and I was always stressed. Oh my God, what, what if they ask me something I don't know? Then then after a while, I was like, but I'm going there to talk about stuff I know. Like why the hell am I worried about that? Yeah. No, I just said I don't know. That's also it's, it's fine if I don't know something. Sure. No, I just said if you don't know, it's fine. If you don't know, you don't We're know. We're not supposed to know everything from everything. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe I also talk about ahead. promotion. I would say every time I got promoted was when I changed my job. But I think it's industry standard right now. <laughs> so if you want to level up, you have to change uh, your job. That's the, that's the first thing. Make and also, yeah. the second thing, I would like to tell you, Patty, something. Also, our little uh, Polish uh, horror story. It was <laughs> way back when <laughs> I... <Write> yourself. <laughs> yes. When I was well, young and it was a primary school, you know, with kids. So, a little bit whatever. But we are fighting whoever will sit in, a, in, in the first, uh, first uh, row. And there were some guys and they told me that I cannot sit in the first row because I will give birth and they will drive a tank. Yeah, that was their argument. And then I thought, fuck off, I can do both. <laughs> Still, I am not driving a tank. <laughs> it's wonderful, uh, Dominica, how, how, how do you like... I probably won't say anything new, uh, but from my experience, actually, I know a lot of, like, girls in the game dev that, yeah, that they are, like, uh, really modest, and they are saying, like, you know, I had a bad week, and I need to prove my worth. I'm not good enough, yeah? And uh, I'm like, but, you know, it, it was just a week. Uh, you know, the next will be better, and, uh, you know, it will, it will not, you know... Uh, do anything with your accomplishments because you did a lot of stuff but but there's like this you know this, uh, problems like we are not uh, that, that's true that we are not confident, confident. enough yeah, yeah. yeah. and what, even what and it's like um, really sad because even if I for example knew that this girl like did a lot of like you know yeah. great job yeah. from yeah. other people yeah. even yeah. and when I'm like you know talk with her and say girl but hey you know you are really great, and I know that because it's not only that I'm thinking that, but like everyone is thinking that. But she's like, no, but but no, but I'm not, yeah. And it's like we we are our, um, you know, yeah, yeah, worst yeah, like exactly, or worst exactly. critics, yeah, yeah, yeah most, yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah. um, which is like, don't trust yourself. There's always gonna be someone who's gonna do that for you, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one thing on, on, on top of this, uh, and I'm, again, boring because I'm a mom, so I talk about kids, but really I, um, I talked with uh, the, the girls who are uh, having this um, mentorship you know, program, and uh, we obviously heard some voices like why we are discriminating guys, right? Why we are not doing sure. the, the program for guys. And one of them uh, said really something very smart that uh, is still on my mind, that the whole raising system, you know, is the mentorship for boys, right? Yes. So that's why we need to, to come up with those programs to just let, to show them, you know, and to empower, uh, empower girls and to, to show them that they can quality. reach. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, ladies, we all have a couple minutes left, pretty much. Uh, let's talk about... Funny, not funny stuff. Uh, do you have any uh, anecdotes uh, from, you know, from your uh, career uh, that you, for instance, uh, and like, 
uh, had a moment of somebody mansplaining stuff to you and you clapped back or uh, you had a moment when you actually, um, when a man ended up just making a fool out of themselves with uh, misogyny. I, uh, I can start because I have one that some of you have already heard. Um, I used to work for the different company that I'm working for right now. And um, one of my bosses I had there, I had plenty of them because I kept changing. Uh, one of them was just not a good manager. He had no clue what was going on. He was always like, you know, just running around, had no idea like what well, his team is working on. And one day he criticized something that my team was working on. And I just snapped and I told them like, you freaking just get your shit together start working properly and manage the, this stuff, you know? And he took me outside of the room. Uh, he told me that, you know, of course, you can't speak like this to me and all that shit. And then uh, he told me, well, you act like this because you're an emotional woman. Like, and now it like, was one step from just basically telling me I'm menstruating, which I was not. <laughs> and yeah, and finally, we had an, like an external meeting after that situation. And I was at the meeting, he was at the meeting, I was just participating in the meeting, and he was sitting there just like a human. Human, like a freaking ball of terrible emotion in there, which he could not handle. So yeah, did you, did, 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 did you guys have situations like this? Danka. All right, so there was once, it was also quite a while ago, when I was still a junior, and I was asked to deliver a quest, and here be with me. A player is entering a cave, and then there is two cannibalists, so people who eat other people, who are raping pregnant women, and this right. woman is screaming, don't kill my child. And I was asked to deliver this quest. I said no, and I was fired. <gasps> Holy shit, wow. Wow. I mean, good you don't walk there anymore. That's yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> that's, that's probably for the best. Yeah. No, mine is no. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. 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 You should have kept that to the end. It would be like the, the, the finish. <laughs> no, my, mine is not so dramatic. But uh, when I started my career, I started teaching English. I was 17 years old. And I worked on a school where... The owner was the only guy, and he would hire only women. And people would think, like, oh, how progressive he's hiring women. No, he hired women because he liked screaming and screaming at women. Women tend to not react when people scream at them. We tend to freeze when yeah. people really scream at us um, un uh, until he hired me, which was hilarious, because he screamed at me, and I... I, I didn't fight, though. I turned around, and I left him talking. I was leaving the room while he was still screaming all the way to the street. The funny part is that the other girls that worked there saw that, and they all left their classrooms and left the school. So suddenly he had no workers anymore because he, they realized that they didn't need to take it. What, what was he going to do? Yeah. And then he had to turn, change his ways, but... I didn't work there anymore. Change it as all he wants. I don't care. Go on. I yeah, will wait. Go, go, go ahead. Then, yeah, uh, like it actually sorry. like t took me like years to fig actually to realize how effed up this is. But uh, I had a manager who had this like weird obsession with uh, with hands, you know, with manicured uh, hands, etc. So yeah, awesome nails. Yeah. So um, and. I remember, you know, we would have meetings, and I would be, like, talking about, you know, like, all the stuff that we were doing, et cetera, et cetera, but he would just, like, be focused on my, you know, chipped, chipped nails and be like, I cannot listen to you. <laughs> and, like, you know, you, got, you, you gotta, like, you know, maybe he was figure out, figure out the, the, yeah, figure yes. out the nail situation, and then we can talk. That sounds like and a better. Like, like, it was, like, super weird, but I didn't give it, like, any important, like, as I told you, like, it took me, like, a long time to realize, you know, like, this is, like, really inappropriate, 
and weird. And I would, you know, yeah. and I would like catch myself, you know, ha having meetings with my, you know, like uh, hands, like uh, in my in my pockets, you know, just so I, my hands wouldn't show. And it was just it was just like normal, you know. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> except it wasn't. Yeah, Mary, go ahead. Uh, actually, I have a funny one, I guess. Uh, once I was working on a tabletop scenario with a guy. Uh, we have never met in person. We were always, you know, um, writing to each other on Discord and emails. For some reason, we have never even um, called each other or talk, talked by a camera or something like that or telephone even and my nickname actually is um, I'm Mary so my nickname is Mary but spelled with like Mary and Pippin so Mary a dog Ma Mary yeah Mary and uh, actually after uh, our scenario got released uh, he saw my real name so Maria Piantkowska and he wrote to me I got a message like, oh my God, you're a girl. <laughs> and I said, yes, I always been. And actually, he told me that he couldn't believe that because uh, the story we, we actually came up with was so great that I was supposed to be a man. And I said, no. <laughs> yep. Okay, ladies, um, I think we have probably like literally time for maybe a question or two. A question, so if anybody uh, w wants to ask us anything, um, go ahead. If not, we'll probably wrap it up because we are, yeah, we're run of time, but uh, the team is very understanding, so, <laughs> yeah. Somebody's coming. Okay, um, yeah, I'm also a lead on uh, People Who Can Fly, and what I wanted to ask you is the thing that I experienced a lot of things in game that, like, it's really open to women, and uh, actually, uh, did you experience the differences between different, uh, comp maybe not companies, but different, I don't know, IT branches, or even not outside of IT? Did you compare these things? Because what I experienced in, it's like game dev is really open, and it's really uh, welcoming women, and the project that you described and things that you described are, for me, an example of really great development in the world and, and, and exactly in societies. So I guess I, the question for me is like, did you have the comparison made or whatever? Thanks. Yeah, just a, in comparison to the music industry, the games is the best industry in the world. There is no problem, like none. Uh, in music industry, women, if you work in music industry and you do a good job, you will be called a groupie. Because the only job a woman can do well is sex, in their mindset. I left exactly because of that, because after 20 years working with them and organizing tours and managing bands, it would, like, piss me off the fact that I still have to explain that I'm not a groupie. I never had a, a, never. But that's the mindset. So yeah, in comparison to music, games is awesome. Um, I can share with you information like this, that we had a, a survey, like employer branding survey, an engagement survey, and you know, uh, I, I'm a feminist, so I was looking those differences, like how uh, our women in red are maybe treated differently and uh, surprisingly positively uh, there is no uh, right there are no differences so when we looked at the like the tempo of the promotion or um, you know just the way they feel right if they feel recognized etc there are no differences so um, you know it's a good sign good news um, but uh, what I said at the beginning that when we um, announced the the project uh, 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 girls uh, from our like we have a slack you know it's like girls and they shared like it was great because they said like here we really feel like recognized safe we like to work with our colleagues you know uh, there is a great team atmosphere but what we experienced before right and it's not necessarily I'm talking about even the professional 
uh, experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, for example, uh, one of them, they were, uh, she was studying uh, Politechnica, and, uh, uh, you know, the, she was like one of the, f I don't know, five girls, maybe on a hundred guys. And uh, the, the professor, he asked on the first lecture, like, uh, are you here to find a husband, right? So, you know, <laughs> those small, stupid comments uh, prove that there is a topic, right? And there yes. is a, a work to do. But uh, answering this question, I encourage all women to come to see the project. We, uh, we have really good atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I encourage every woman here to come to Flying Wild Hog. <laughs> <laughs> Artificial, come, come, girls. I'm waiting. They have cool lead. They have cool lead. Ah, okay. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's crazy. They have a cool okay. Come on, they more have confidence. It. They have it. Drop the mic. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, if we don't have any more questions, uh, we'll wrap it up because we're crazy <laughs> out of time. Uh, my name is Ola Sonde. I represent uh, Draw Distance, where I lead the uh, uh, communications team. There's my team member right there. Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you, ladies. Let's, you know, let's, let's you. get outside and, uh, yeah, and have a chat afterwards. Thank, thank you. you.